There we go. Okay. All right. So um, let's uh, let's get to it. So if you go to makecode.com, um, this is um, uh, Microsoft's product, basically, or site. Um, and there's a lot of ways that you can use it, uh, you know, with uh, different hardware. So there are these different circuity things. Um, Minecraft, we've already kind of talked about. So if you click on that, then basically you can do programming. Uh, you can sort of do stuff on the website. Uh, and it looks very much like we've, uh, uh, it, it's basically the same thing as what we've, we've seen in the game. Um, I guess the benefit to this, though, is that you can, you can make a user and save things and it's, yeah, whatever. So if you're gonna do something with Minecraft then um, <clears throat> think about that. But uh, one of the other options that we have is this one called Arcade. Um, and okay, the stupid cookies thing, go away. Okay, um, anyway. Um, <clears throat> okay, so. Let's just uh, let's just start a uh, blank project here. And uh, one thing I like about this over vanilla Scratch is that, like with uh, the the make code um, for Minecraft view, uh, you've got the option to do block or Python uh, based coding. And so if we create just start new project, uh, and then I'll switch this over to uh, Python rather than JavaScript. Um, okay, so right now, of course, we don't have anything. Um, but uh, th the the idea here is that uh, instead of, uh, well, you're programming like a pretend uh, Game Boy or 2DS, 3DS kind of, kind of system. Um, and uh, you guys probably... Anybody have, you guys played 2DS, 3DS when you were kids? Yeah, what about classic Game Boys? Yeah, so uh, <laughs> when we moved to Texas in the, I think it was what, the fall of 1990, um, uh, you know, move, well, got to find a dentist. So we find a dentist, and this was the coolest dentist, because what did he have in the waiting room? He had a Game Boy. Actually, he had like two or whatever, right? And what games did he have for the Game Boy? Well, he had Tetris. Okay, so when you're sitting there in the waiting room, waiting for the dentist, you'd sit there and play, play Tetris. The last time I went to see him was, I was 21, getting ready to leave for graduate school. And, uh, Go sit in the waiting room, and what's there? The Game Boys. The same Game Boy that was there in 1990 with Tetris on it. And you bet your butt I still sat there and played it. So, anyway. Um, yeah, so the idea is you've got a little game here, or little, you know, fake console or whatever. And, um, you know, actually, does anybody have a controller that will plug into their computer? Like, uh... Do Xbox controllers work on? Yeah, okay. So I, I wonder if if you do that, if you can actually use like the A and B buttons in the direction pad, uh, rather than having to use, say, the WASD keys or something like that. Um, so if, if somebody's got a controller, just try it out and see, see, because I bet you you can do something like that. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, okay, anyway. So uh, in block mode, Right, let's just kind of see what we've got. Well, a lot of this is going to be very similar to um, what we have on Minecraft, but obviously a lot of it's going to be more specific to this because, well, there's not Minecraft. Um, and we'll talk about the sprites in a minute. Uh, there's controller stuff, so, um, you know, buttons and whatnot, you know, checking whether or not a button is pressed or doing something when a button is pressed uh at etc okay 
Uh, you've got game things, which would be like game update, game update every 500 milliseconds, uh, a game over state, a reset thing, splash screens, dialogues, okay? Uh, music, uh, music and sound uh, things, okay? Scene stuff. Um, so the scene is basically like a... Um, um, you know, what's the screen width, what's the screen height, what's the background, what's the background image, etc. Uh, some effects, okay, and then tiles. So the tiles, basically, uh, what they're going for here is kind of how uh, old school Nintendo games actually uh, worked, uh, which is that the, the stuff that you map to the screen, uh, other than the character, right, there were two different sort of categories, but one of them was a tile map and you would basically say say the tile looks like this and they need to be put here here and here and so on um and so you could build up like a like a you know imagine like a zelda dungeon or something like that or or say side scrolling mario right side scrolling mario each of those bricks is a tile and you're putting the tiles in certain positions um along the, in the game then the, the the ground is one and the the pipes are one and you know things like that okay um so you've got all this tile map stuff okay uh camera which basically like you can make the camera sort of follow the thing so like if you were making a zelda game um well think back to the original zelda what happens when you move Huh? Well, it kind of depends. So, like, if you're in a dungeon, what happens to Zelda when you move? Nothing. Well, I mean, you, it, sorry, nothing. He moves, but, like, the screen doesn't stay centered on Zelda, necessarily. Okay, but what happens if you're in the overworld? Then it does, right? So, you've. do you guys not know what I'm talking about with the original Zelda? No? Okay, let me, let's just find a oops dang it okay so you guys see the camera is not staying centered on Zelda. Good choice. Always take the hearts. Okay, so here, the, the point I wanted to make is that the camera is not centered on Zelda, but what happens is that the screen changes based on, you know, when you get to an edge, it loads the next, like, section. Um, now, if we contrast that with, say, something like Link to the Past from the Super Nintendo, um, let me skip through. Here, let me skip this. Right, so here, the camera does follow him. Um, but it still does that sort of effect like the Nintendo one. And I think from a technical perspective, they didn't have to do that on the Super Nintendo. But I think the reason they did that was to kind of get that um, partly the aesthetic from um, okay. Sorry, I'm hearing the sound of the music here and it's a little distracting. 
Yeah. Um, I think part of what they were doing, right, is that um, capturing sort of the nostalgic aesthetic from the original, the two Zelda games that were on the, the original Nintendo, um, uh, Legend of Zelda, and then, uh, what was the second one called? Zelda 2, but it had a name. I'm blanking on the name, but anyway. Um, so you guys get the idea, like you could kind of go either way there. Uh, Adventure of Link, that's right, thank you. Um, it had weird music. They used a lot of glissando in that soundtrack. Um, so, or, or vibrato, excuse me, not glissando. Um, anyway, so, uh, right. Let's go back to the make code stuff. Uh, where were we? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, scene stuff, you've got, uh, or sorry, tile maps, the camera, um, and uh, info stuff, so score, high score, life, right? It's already got some of these kind of uh, variables that would be related to gameplay uh, built in because, right, this thing's designed for making games specifically. Scratch is a bit more general, right? Scratch, you can just do whatever you want. It's not necessarily pigeonholing you into making a game. This, uh, as opposed to, say, just an animation or a movie or, you know, something like that. Uh, this is obviously designed specifically for um, uh, for uh, game-type stuff. Um, and uh, so, you know, things like life or whatever is all already kind of built in. Uh, it can do multiplayer, uh, so you can have actually up to four players, which I thought was kind of interesting. I don't know how you would control four players on this without, like, a bunch of controllers or everybody huddled around a keyboard, but, you know, I mean, theoretically, you could do it. Uh, then, of course, we've got sort of the usual things. We've got the loops, um, and one thing that's a little different than Scratch here is we've got the, the repeat a specific number of times. But we actually have the for loop, and we can get a hold of the index variable, right? So one of the things I could do here is, let me just put this in the start there, and then um, I'm just going to put a little thing there. Okay, so what this would do, it, well, and let me also put a wait in there so it doesn't all happen instantly. All right, so if I run this, um, where's the run? There, there it is. Oh, um, well, oh, it doesn't like this. That line, okay. Uh, basically, I just wanted to uh, say something. Oh, uh, okay, so index. Maybe that? Let's try that. Nope. Well, that's the question, right? What does Splash do? So here, let's go to the game and let's... Um, Show a title and optional subtitle menu. Prompts a user for a Boolean question. Ask for number. Ask for string. Um, here we go. Show long text. Let's try this one. Nope. Yeah. Loading, maybe. Well, first off, here, why don't we just do this? Let's try. Okay, well, so that worked. Um, I just wanted to make it uh, say the text, so uh, well, what we may have to do is, uh, let's go to advanced text, um, ah, here we go, 
this is what I want. So it was complaining because it was a number and it was trying to print a string. Okay, now in Scratch you can actually do that, uh, and it'll just do it because it treats it, it's sort of smart enough to realize it. So I actually like that they've done this here to deliberately make it not work. So um, the item index is a number. The thing that the show long text uh, operator is expecting is a text object. And numbers and text objects are not the same thing in terms of actually data storage, right? We've seen that, right? How is text stored, for example? What's one way of encoding text? Yeah, like using ASCII encoding, okay? How are numbers encoded? Oh, come on, guys, wake up, let's go. How are numbers encoded? In binary, okay, yes, if there's anything we've learned from this class, that things are encoded with zeros and ones. Okay, let's be a bit more specific than that. How are integers encoded? Integer. Two's complement. Floating point is for things that aren't integers, possibly, okay? Right, but we had several encoding schemes, right? We had a system for integers that we where we used two's complement and that sort of thing, and then we also had the system for floating points where we did everything there, okay? Uh, different data types, and you can't just mix them willy-nilly, um, but you can convert from one to another. So for example, how could, is it possible to take an integer and convert it to a float? Yes. You have to think about it. I mean, if you guys are doing it by hand, right, how would you encode, say, the number two as, a, um, uh, as an integer? What would the far right bit be? Zero. What would the next bit be? And then everything else would be, okay, just depending on how many bits you're allocating. We did eight for a lot of things, but it could be 32, 64, whatever, right? Okay, how would you encode two as a floating point number? Well, first step is two is equal to one, zero, or sorry, two is one times two to the first, right? So what's your exponent? One, what's your mantissa? all zeros because it's one point all zeros, okay? Exponent is a one, mantis is all zeros, sign bit is zero because we have a positive number. All right, so if the exponent is one, what do we actually encode for the exponent? Four because of the bias, and what's the order? Sign bit, exponent, mantissa. So we would have zero for the sign bit, the next bit would be one, zero, zero, that's our exponent, and then our mantissa is all zeros. So that would be in hex what? I'll take uh, four zero for 500, Alex, right? Zero, one, zero, 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 zero. That's four zero in hex. Yes? Okay, those are different, right? But can we convert between them? Okay, similarly, if I have a number, can I convert it to a text object? Theoretically. Okay, how would I do that? I'd have to look at the number, and I'd have to say, oh, well, what's the digit in the ones place? And then instead of that digit as a number, I'd have to replace it with the ASCII character. And then I'd have to do that for all of the digits until I built up a thing encoded in ASCII. Okay, now I will tell you that that actually doing it like programming something to do that procedure is non-trivial. If you don't believe me, why don't you ask the guys that are in my CS241 class how they feel about int to string and string to int, because that's what they're doing right now, is writing programs uh, for the processors that are in your iPhones to, to actually do that data conversion. And it's a total pain in the butt. Okay, but once you write the function to do it, then it's easy because you guys just use the function, right? Does that make sense? Yeah? Okay, so uh, 
that's what we had to do here is just convert the number to a text and notice what do we got printed uh, down here? Zero. Okay, but if I hit A or A, okay, it waits a second. The number updates. Okay, and um, then it prints the updated number. Okay. So what, one of the things I like about that, though, is so like uh, you guys know, well, you remember in the, the core skills exam or like the iteration homework or the recursion homework and stuff where the, we would have stuff like 4i in range blah, and then i would show up in the, the stuff below there. We couldn't do that in Scratch. Okay, but you can here because the index, this is like, I or J or K or N or whatever. They just call it index here because, hey, this is made for kids. Okay, uh, so that's kind of cool that we've got that. And if we go over to the Python view, let's just see kind of how this um, for I in range or index in range five, right? What does range five mean in Python? Zero to four. Okay, why zero? Because unless it's specified what you start at, where do you start? You always start at zero unless otherwise specified. And where do you end? Huh? Yeah, one, one before the number that's actually there, right? Okay, now uh, wh why did perhaps Guido uh, von Rossum, that's the guy who made uh, who invented Python. Uh, I hope I'm pronouncing his name right. I mean, that's literally his first name, though. right? So it's not just me being, like, anti-Italian or something. Um, so uh, uh, what's maybe one benefit of it being, if I want to do 0 through 4, saying for i in range 5, how many things are there between 0 and 4? Five things. Right, so the fact that the five is there is both annoying and not annoying. But he had to pick something, so whatever. Um, okay, and uh, yeah. Okay, but could I change this thing? Let me change it to schmindex instead of index. Should it still work? Yeah, still works, right? I just changed the name of the variable. Right, so instead of index in range, I called it schmindex. Oh, yeah, 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 no, good point. I changed it both there and here. If I hadn't changed it in one of the two spots, what would have happened? Error, right? It would have been I am error. Okay, that's a really obscure Nintendo reference. No? Do you get it? I am error? <sighs> Would you explain to everybody? Uh-huh. Why does he say that? Why is it I am error? It's a crappy translation from the Japanese. Yeah, there's, there's two characters called Bug and Error. And they're kind of Easter eggs in the game. But the one that's named error says, I am error is how it is in English. In Japanese, it's more like my name is error. Um, I've got a book in my office that's title is I am error. And it's all about the, the Nintendo. Um, anyway. Um, okay. So uh, we've got that. And, uh, and it works. Now, if we go back to blocks, this is what I'm a little curious is what it'll do. Hey, it did it. It just renamed it to Schmindex. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah, very cool. What do you guys think? No. Do I need to, like, start injecting you guys with coffee when you walk in the door? No. You're awake. Huh? Hanging on? Uh. Okay. 
All right. So anyway, uh, so we've got the looping structures like we had before. Um, um, we've got while loops, for loops. Uh, you can actually iterate over the values in a list of things, which is kind of handy. Um, and then the on start, right, would be everything goes ultimately in your on start uh, in the sense that, like, well, that's what's going to get executed when you boot up the game. And then if you go to other stuff, then the on, excuse me, the on start thing is going to have to call other things. Um, okay, so uh, logic. Here, let me scoot. Oops. Let me make this a little bigger. Um, what do you got? Well, if, if, then else, you can also do multiple cases, which is kind of nice. Um, comparisons equal to less than, right? You've got uh, all of the numeric comparisons you could want. Um, you can actually also do string comparisons. So uh, you can compare two pieces of text and compare whether they're the same or different. Um, and then, uh, Let's just actually plop that one down. So what do you think it means for one piece of str uh, characters, one like word to be less than another? Right, equal and not equal makes sense. They're either the same or they're not. Okay, but what does less than mean in that case? Okay, that would be one possibility. Then the length of them we could talk about being less or greater. Um, the other thing we could mean is actually like think about dictionary order. Okay, so if you look up Apple and Aardvark in the dictionary, which one comes first? Aardvark, right? Um, which one do they mean here? I don't know. Let's find out. Okay, so what can we do here? Let's do a logic. Let's do uh, if... Aardvark... is less than apple. Oh, it doesn't, oh, there it goes, okay. Uh, if aardvark is less than apple, um, where'd my text go? Okay, so let's run this and see what happens. Okay, so it did say aardvark, which what does that mean? That aardvark is in fact less than apple, uh, even though aardvark is clearly a longer word. Okay, so what's the order here? What's less than mean in this context? Dictionary order. Okay, does that make sense? Good? Yeah, all right. And then equal and unequal, right? That's pretty obvious what those should mean. Okay, so we've got logic, um, Boolean operators. You've got and, or, and not. Uh, or, what's nice here, unlike, well, actually, no, it doesn't have it. Uh, you've got and, or, and not. All right, what about if you want XOR or something like that? You got to build it out of and or and not. Okay, so how did we build XOR, for example? If you want to do A, X, or B, what is it? Yeah. Not or. Uh, not quite. For logic reasons, and just trust me, I'm a doctor. Uh, not. A or B is the same as not A and not B, okay, uh, using a thing called De Morgan's Laws. Um, so, well, what was it? It was A or B and not A and not B, right? It was A or B, but not both, right? So you'd have to build it up um, using the, the primitives and or and not. And, in fact, it's possible to build all of them from that primitive set of three, okay? Uh, so you've got all the logic you could want. 
and um, yeah, okay. Variables, uh, that's going to be like in um, uh, Scratch or the Minecraft thing, right? You can make in uh, your variables whatever you want. Uh, I created one called Schmindex, and so it sort of automatically put that in my little table there of variables. Um, if I create a variable, um, in this case, so let's do that. Okay, so let me just call it var. What kind of variables, these variables are, what, what kind of object are they? Okay, just looking at what we've got here. Did it ever ask me for what kind of data the variable was going to be? When I created one, it didn't. Okay, so that means it's assuming that all variables that you create there are the same data type. What data type do you think that is? Numbers. Okay. Um, I don't think it has to be integers. Um, I think it, uh, so like for example, we could set var to a float. Uh, here it, it makes, it looks like it doesn't really make a distinction between float and int, right? Um, which is sloppy, but it's for kids, right? So we'll, we'll forgive them. Um, okay, variables, we talked about that. Math, you've got pretty much everything you want there. Random numbers, constraints, um, uh, mapping, chances, Min and max, absolute value, square root, all the trig functions, pretty much anything you could want. Um, and then under advanced, we've got stuff for images, um, doing image manipulation. Uh, hey, we can have, it's got some built-in stuff, right? You guys kind of noticing like the coin, I bet you that rotates, couches, hamburgers, mushrooms, trees. wonder if there's any badgers. Do you guys get that one? Badgers, 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 bad. Uh, yeah, okay. All right, just checking. Uh, okay, so yeah, so there's tons of, tons of little uh, sprite objects built in that you can get at. Um, functions, you can make functions, okay. Um, arrays, this would be like, the, there's uh, two different kinds of arrays. So there's lists of numbers and lists of words or textual objects, okay. Uh, and so we've got list and test lists. You can get the length of these things. You can add or remove things from them. Uh, and so on. Okay, then you've got text stuff. So you can make a text object. You can compute the length of it. You can take two text objects and combine them together. That's called concatenation. You can take a text object and turn it into a number. So if I have the text one, two, three, it will spit out the number one, two, three. That's called string to int or string to number. And the other one that I used, which was, where was it? Uh, this one down here, convert to text, takes a number and returns it as a text object. Um, my guys in 241 are writing the functions to do both of those things. So one of their assignments is string to int and the other one's int to string. And believe me, they are pulling out their hair over them, okay? Because uh, they're not easy. Uh, all right, console. Um, not sure what all we would do there. Uh, console logs. Uh, this would be something you would use for debugging, uh, usually. Uh, and then extensions. There are actually a ton of little extensions that you could add to this thing, right? So you can do palette stuff. Uh, I'm not sure what that is, right? Animations, uh, keyboard emulation, uh, stuff to do like, I mean, you guys probably this is the thing nowadays. You've got these stupid, like, uh, RGB everything in your computers. Like, I mean, how many of you guys have, like, an RGB mouse pad for crying out loud? 
You know what I'm talking about, though. You do? Get out. Huh? RGB mouse, RGB mouse pad, RGB keyboards. The RGB keyboard makes sense because then you can have different colors for different keys in different games, right? Okay, but yeah, and then we got Disco Fever going on over there, right? It's raining, man. Hallelujah. No. Um, okay, so all kinds of really cool extensions here. Um, and a lot of these, obviously, you wouldn't want to use. Um, save games. Right, so if you were building like a Zelda type thing, tile maps, um, I mean, there's all kinds of really cool stuff in here. Stuff to do button combos, right, because up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, B, A, B, A, select, start. Yeah, what's that? Yeah, the, the Konami code. Yeah, you guys call yourselves men. Yeah, in all the Konami games, there was a sequence that you could use to activate a cheat mode. Believe me, when you were eight, it took a lot of practice to do it and time it just right. Um, okay. Um, anyway, uh, so there's all kinds of stuff here that you can use to, uh, uh, to extend this. Um, I actually kind of wish I had known that this thing existed a couple of years ago because I think it's uh, it's kind of cool. All right, so you guys know what Scratch can do because you've already done something with it. We've talked about Minecraft for a few days. What do you guys think about this as opposed to Minecraft? You like it. Okay, does anybody like it better than Minecraft? Okay, does anybody? Okay, great. What about people that would rather do stuff in Minecraft? Okay, Any, some of you haven't decided. Okay, so what I'm going to do is let's just, it's up to you. Okay, which one do you want to do? Minecraft, Scratch, or this? Okay, and in here, what are you basically doing? Making a game, right, of some sort. Now, it's going to be a simple game. You're not going to program the entirety of Zelda, right, in something like this. That ain't happening. Okay, um, but, uh, you know, could you do something like uh, the beginning of a Mario type game or like uh, Galaga or something or like Space Invaders where there's things and you shoot them and whatnot? Yeah, do you think we could handle something like that? Yeah. Um, okay, now what about those of you guys who want to do Minecraft? What are you guys thinking about doing with it? Yeah. Okay, so auto tiller, an auto farm agent, right? Okay. And what all do you have to do to do that? Well, I mean, sorry, what does the agent have to do? He's got to walk, move around. He's got to till plots. You got to do watering, right? Plant seeds. Okay, now the watering, uh, does your bucket hold finitely much water? Okay, so you have you one use. I've got one tile with one seed in it. I've got a full bucket. I water that tile, and now my bucket's empty, and I've got to go refill it to, to water the next tile. Is that how it works in the regular game? Right. Okay, what about if a water block is not touching it? Okay, so it's not, okay, so it's not, though, that you have, like, row of seeds, dirt walkway, row of seeds, and then there's a, there's a pool of water over here. Yeah, doesn't have to, you don't have to do water Okay, so, so then to put water, a water block down, you have to have a full bucket and then there has to be a hole where the water would go, and you pour it into that 
Okay, does the water disappear after a amount of time? No. Okay, so once there's a water block, it stays a water block forever. Okay, what about if it starts raining? Nothing. That doesn't matter. Okay, that's a little annoying. But, okay, so what you would have to do there is the agent would have to go and take the bucket. There'd be a hole for the water, put the water in it, and then how do you refill your bucket? Okay, so you could put a water block down, right-click, and fill your bucket back up with water. Oh. Okay, so then what's a water source? So water is a block. Right. So if I go to an ocean... Okay. 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 So you have to figure that crap out. Okay. It's what, huh. Well, I mean, I want to know how the damn thing works, right? right. Okay. So, um, yeah. Yes. Okay, so so hacks. Okay, <laughs> you got your work cut out for you, bro. And then then once it's working, I'll be like, oh, that's how it works. I mean, because you guys have to remember, like, I never played Minecraft, right? When it came out, when you guys were how old were you when Minecraft became a thing? Ten, yeah, eight. You probably had like Minecraft pajamas. No, not that young. Really? Oh, you had you were deprived as a child. Uh, now my I mean Minecraft and Pokemon are two things that I was too old for, right? So Pokemon, like I was in the high school college when that thing became a thing. Right? And so I never got into it because that was what eight year olds were playing. Yeah? No? And now you guys are probably like, oh, yeah, you know, I'll take my Chizard and my whatever and do the, right? That is a Pokemon, right? Charizard. Chiz Chiz uh, that's why. <laughs> See, the fact that you're laughing at me. Oh, kids these days. Oh, uh, briefly. Oh. You guys wonder why I drink. Uh, so, yes. So, Ch Ch Pokemon, or what was it that South Park spoofed it as? Yeah. So, okay. Anyway. Um, so, uh, what I'd like you guys to do, basically, I, I set up a little assignment, and it's basically just a text box. You don't have to upload anything, right? You just put stuff in the text box and hit submit. Uh, for tonight, basically, what are you thinking about doing? I just want to know what do you want to do? Make code arcade? You want to do Minecraft? Do you want to do Scratch? Okay, just tell me which one you want to play with and what you're thinking about doing in it. Okay, because I want to make sure that like nobody's trying to go off the deep end or do something too insane. Okay, uh, can you guys do that for me, please, tonight? Yeah. Just want to know what you're up to, what you want to be up to, okay? Um, now, where we're going to go with this is, um, and we'll talk about this part of it more. So what I'm planning, and I'm not sure when we'll do it, I'll have to figure that out, is basically a game jam where you guys will show this stuff off. And the way that we're going to do that is I'm going to stream it to Twitch, but you guys will all stream to my computer through Discord, and then I'll stream Discord to Twitch, Okay, so yeah, I know it's going to be like Streamception going on, right? But we'll do that instead of Zoom because Discord's much better on the uh, game streaming end. Twi I mean, uh, 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 Zoom. Zoom's great for screen sharing, but the second that you're showing animated content, it is a total train wreck. 
Okay, Discord, on the other hand, streaming is much better. Okay, so we'll do this game jam basically so that we can show off what you guys have come up with. Okay, and uh, hopefully we'll do it in, um, you know, and because it'll be on Twitch, right? Everybody can join. It'll be a lot of fun. Yeah. Okay, so what does that mean about what you're going to produce? It's got to be decent. What happens if it's a piece of crap? Public humiliation. Okay. All right, that's appropriate. Call of Duty. Right, Minecraft edition. All right. Well, it's 8.50, so, okay, you guys... Um, no, Koi, we weren't using Minecraft. We're using, uh, looking on uh, make code here. So we were talking about Minecraft. We weren't actually using it. So, um, okay. So you guys got your marching orders. You know what the three options are. Poke around, kind of think about something cool that you could do. Make a decision as to which direction you want to go. Tell me what that direction is tonight. See you play? All right. See you guys later.